30 minutes is a big change. And I thought, I think it has helped me. Yeah, a lot. for sure. Definitely. Mm -hmm. but, but certainly you've, uh, you've got made more money on the tour this year. So yeah. <laughs> if you went by the uh, use, yeah. use dollars earned as a, as a metric, it's tr definitely trending in the right direction. So yeah. Welcome to the Golf Fitness Bomb Squad, and I'm your host here, Chris Finn, and I have a very exciting guest, uh, one young lady that I've known for a very long time, uh, ever since she was a young girl. Um, and and uh, we have Jennifer Chang with us today. She is on the LPGA Tour. Um, for those of you who don't know her, you need to get to know her because she's one of the, the best humans as well as uh, one of the best golfers I've ever met. Um, just... A little bit about Jennifer because she's super humble and she won't say any of it herself. Um, is yeah, basically I think you know, I've known Jenny since she was thirteen or you know basically in, in high school and um, she is North Carolina's first ever four time state high school junior girls champ. Um, she went out, off to USC, um, played two seasons over at the University of Southern California. Um, she won three times, was a first team All American. She uh, also basically then, I don't know, what was it? I think it was only two years at USC, and then she turned pro. And then she's been playing pro on the you know, on tour ever since. So, um, Jenny, thank you so much for being here with us. We're excited to have you. Thanks for having me, Chris. So, Jenny, there's a lot of people out there who, when we talk about, you know, you know just the how do you develop somebody – from a junior golfer who's like, oh, this is kind of a cool game to being one of the best players in the world. And you've obviously been through that whole journey. What mm -hmm. do you, you know, I'm always curious to ask when we have someone like yourself on is like, what do you, as you've gone through each of the phases, like your junior golf to your college golf to mm -hmm. your professional golf, like what are some of the things that stick out to you in terms of the differences as, as well as kind of what are the carryovers that you saw as you went from, you know, playing down the road at Lockmere Golf Course to now playing the best courses in the world? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, I think as you grow up and like compete and play golf, you notice like the level of competition um, intensifies and like the good, there's a ton of great players, like even more um, great players um, as you play. So like when I first played junior golf, I mean, don't get me wrong, the competition was pretty intense. Um, but then, like, when I go to more of an elite amateur, um, you know, there's the good players and then the great players. And then now that I'm on tour, there's just a very fine line between that. I mean, everyone on tour is great. So um, as a junior golfer, if you shot, like, two under, you're on top of the leaderboard or even as an amateur. And then when you're on tour, if you shoot like a couple under, that might move you up like a couple spots. So, I mean, there's just the competitive nature um, on the tour level. It's a little more consistent um, and it's definitely tougher out here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think that's, you know, one of the things that, that I've seen working with, you know, people, you know, from kids all the way to, you know, the, the, your caliber on the PGA, LPGA tour, and even our long drive guys and girls that we work with. What separates the 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 winners from the people who don't make the cut is actually very little. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think you know, obviously you know what we've worked a lot on is the physical side of things and the body, and um, you know naturally we're not the fastest human being swinging a golf club that we <laughs> that we met, yeah. right? Not, yeah, that, like. You, you, you've so many a others. One. You, you definitely are not the, the tallest and the biggest, you know, biggest yeah. woman we've, we've worked with. So we were dealing with kind of like that. That's how you're made and then kind of trying to optimize, you know, the, the body for your game. You know, what what do you see on tour, you know, or, or what have you seen kind of throughout your journey that some of the things that have been the most helpful for you on the physical side and made kind of the biggest impact for you uh, to be you know successful at all the levels that you've been successful at? Mm -hmm. I mean, I should have mentioned that actually earlier. That's also another big difference is like how much we play now um, compared to before. I mean, junior golf, you play whenever you're 
um, you know, in the summer when your parents had work off, um, right. and then as an amateur, you were a little bit more flexible. Um, but as I got older, I learned how important you had to like physically be in shape and how your body had to be, um, healthy all the time. And I think I've learned that the hard way, especially since I've been on the road a ton. Um, I think my first two on tour, I was injured a lot, wasn't keeping up with my workouts. I'm guilty of that. Um, yes, and I, then, I, I remember the, that year. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yeah, everyone can attest to that at the gym. That I've, I've hurt myself quite a bit on my first two years. Um, but I've learned, you know, you really have to prioritize your mobility and making sure you're on top of your workouts. And especially with how much golf we play um, and how much we're on the road for, you can't expect to play good golf if your body isn't, you know, healthy first. Um, that's probably one of the biggest things that I've realized. Like I can't expect myself to hit it as far as I do. if like I'm injured or if I'm not keeping up with the workouts and staying as strong as I can. For sure. And so like, just, I'm curious for you, what have you learned? Like if you had to give like the top three to five things that you think about when you think about keeping your body healthy for you on the road, because it's obviously it's different for every golfer in terms of certain mm -hmm. hot spots or areas that, that they feel like yeah. are the most important for them. For you, what, what would you say are kind of the top areas that when you're on the road or playing a lot of golf or traveling, like that you really prioritize that like, if I don't do, if I at least do these, these things, I should be okay. Like what are, mm -hmm. what are kind of those, like those big priorities for you? Yeah, um, definitely mobility, like soft tissue stuff, things that I can do on my own. Um, and then obviously working out. Those are like the two biggest things. Um, so like before I go out and warm up, like my course warm up, I'll do a like gym warm up. So soft tissue um, and then a lot of activation stuff. And yeah, so take, I realized. Let's, let's take me through to, and take everyone listening through like like mm -hmm. you say a tissue work obviously i know what it is because we give it to you yeah but <laughs> but like for everyone listening like like talk like walk, talk through like when you you're getting ready to go play your round what does that mm -hmm. gym workout look like like what, what areas are you doing tissue work with are you using softballs or lacrosse balls or foam rollers or yeah. mm -hmm. like like kind of walk us through kind of what your routine is before you go play yeah, so I always carry a lacrosse ball with me. I usually have two because I end up losing one. <laughs> and then I always have a foam roller, which the LPG provides. But if I want to do something at my hotel room or wherever I'm staying, I'll always have that with me. Um, so that's like the first thing I always do. As soon as I get to the course, um, I'll eat and then hit the gym. I'll do a lot of soft tissue, which is just with the lacrosse ball, working on like the hit so as um, my target, a lot of areas that I tend to be pretty um, tight in um, and then like the shoulders or like the neck, the neck area is probably the biggest thing for me um, that I work on a ton. And typically that range is that time that I spend doing my gym warm up is 15 to 25 minutes. It can get up to like half an hour, depending on if I really need to work on something. Mm -hmm. Um, then I'll use the foam roller to roll out my back, quads. Um, and then I'll do some activation stuff. So with bands, I'll do um, like squats or, um, oh my God, I'm losing, I forgot the, what's the, I'm putting you the on the spot. Where, what is this warm up oh that you God, speak of, Jenny? I, <laughs> <laughs> I was a communications major, so I feel like I should be good at this. Um, What's the one where you um, put the bands around your ankles and you move side to side? Yeah, so okay. some people call them monster walks. Some people call them butt burners. Oh, yeah, some, yeah, yeah, butt burners. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I knew that. <laughs> um, <laughs> some butt burners. And then, like, this week, I'm working on some shoulder stuff. So I've got a band where I just kind of um, work on activating my shoulder a little bit to so moving mm -hmm. the band back and forth and then side to side. Um, so it varies depending on what I'm – want to work on and another important thing is just when I'm on the road I talk with the physio so like Will is who I work with so we talk we catch up on a weekly basis of like how the body's feeling and then 
he tells me what I need to do. So like this week working on the shoulder. So he's set up some things for me to do. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. like really important. Have like a checklist of what I need to get through. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I, and <laughs> I'm going to assume that you know more about those areas now than like when we started, when you were in high school, like we yeah. were like, and this is the kind of my, you know, my experience on the coach side is when I have a high schooler, mm -hmm. Um, or somebody new, maybe they can, can even be in college if they're new to working out. Like the first year to two years is literally just helping you learn your body and learn like, yeah. all right, you tri you got a, a big trip coming up. Like what, mm -hmm. what, what went well, what went wrong, you know, and then it's kind of a, an iterative process of continuing to build up this routine so that when people do get to the level that you're at, that they kind of have an understanding of like free, like, Hey, my hips tend to be, you know, an area that I need to work on more, my shoulders and um, and I think that's so important that, you know, something that we see, not just at the highest of high levels. I mean, we see this just in amateur golfers too. Um, you know, guys trying to play a, you know, a member member or club championship or go on a golf trip. Um, and so the, you know, I think you're on the, you know, a lot of our the tour pros kind of learn it a lot earlier. Most people don't learn it for like another 30 years. Like, like if you weren't playing golf, <laughs> another 30 years of your life, yeah. maybe something really hurts. And then like, that's when most people really start to learn, like in their fifties and sixties. Mm -hmm. Um, so it sounds like for you, the, one of the keys to being successful on the road a lot has been kind of that pre pre play and knowing kind of where those hot spots are. And, and now would you say that, yeah. that they change or move as the season goes on? Um, I would say I've been pretty consistent with it, especially since last year, I really started to learn like about my body and like, Oh, well, if I feel this, I know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. since I've like been on the road consistently. And then, um, I would also say one of the biggest things that I've learned is that I've spent more time now just doing warm up in the gym. Um, and then the amount of time I've spent actually warming up on the course has gotten shorter because I used to warm up maybe like an hour and 20 to hour and a half before I teed off. And mm -hmm. you're already going to be out on the course for like five hours, yeah, right? That's a long so, day. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I've and sometimes I'd see the girls out there like, how are they, you know, only warming up for 50 minutes? Like, I always felt like I needed that extra amount of time. But yeah. I've learned like, if I can warm up properly, like in the gym, by the time I get to the range, my body should feel like I've already hit golf ball. Like, I right. should feel like it's super easy, and I don't need to do extra work to stretch. Um, which I think has been the biggest game changer for me because that means an extra 20 minutes to sleep too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, that is not a bad, th bad thing to gain either. So, so, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you know, people listening right now, they're, they're, they're like, okay, cool. You know, all right, this is, this is kind of a fitness podcast. That's cool. We know what she does for her body. We're all golfers. Mm -hmm. Everybody's curious. All right. What do you do to warm up? <laughs> Actually, so you do the mm -hmm. body. Now you get to the range. Like, do you have a routine yeah. where you go through certain clubs, you hit a certain number of balls? Do you go by feel? Because I do yeah. think, you know, obviously we're on the, the physical side, but one of the big things we talk about is routine and, and mm -hmm. on the road, you know, whether it's, you know, obviously nutrition or workout, but it's so important at the highest of high levels to have that routine on the course as well. So pre round, what is, you know, you've done your warm ups. We know you've done your stuff in the gym. Now you head out to the range. What does that 50 minutes yeah. look like for you now? Yeah, um, usually it varies like how the practice facility layout is. So if the putting greens or the driving range is really far, then I'll start with warming up on the range first. Um, so typically, like, let's what I'll do first is putt. So I'll spend maybe like 15, 10 to 15 minutes working on technique. Um, so I'll have like a, a mirror and a gate drill that I do and then do some live putts and then head to the range after. Mm -hmm. um, and on the range, I spend like a max of maybe 20 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not a lot that I do. Like I kind of go through my whole set. So I'll start mm -hmm. with like a couple of my edges. I go through 58 and 46 degree. And then I'll alternate. I'll go like every other club, so like pitching wedge and then eight iron. Yeah. Um, and then all the way up. And then I typically do all my woods, like two or three golf balls. Okay. Um, so it's really quick. And it's not like I have to do these clubs every time. It's just all by feel. Mm -hmm. Like I don't hit the same number of balls either. I'm 
very much a feel person. So I go with the flow of the day and like what I feel like doing. Yeah. Very cool. And then, and then after you hit those balls, then are you going looking at pin sheets? Are you just um, hanging out? So, what do you do at that point? Yeah. Um, if I have extra time, like I'll chip too and mm-hmm. then put at the end if I have the time, um, which usually I do. And then for me, I don't use a yardage book. So my mm-hmm. caddy does all that. Yeah. Um, cause so I'm like, and I just started doing that this year and I find that it helps me a ton. It's less thinking for me. So like visually I can see what I need to do. And then if I need the yardage book, I'll look at my caddies, but, um, you know, with golf, it's a lot of it's mental. So, um, so I try to reduce it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know, that's the thing with golf. Yeah. Um, but I try to just not stress my myself out as much as I can. And if it means not looking at the yardage book, then I won't mm. do that. Yeah, um, little things. So, yeah, so a lot of external you, factors. Yeah, what did you? So you've cut your your warm up time down by like. Was that 30? 30 I mean, by like basically 20, was that 30%? I mean, a significant amount. Yeah. Like what, mm-hmm. what did you take out? Um, it was more time just like putting and hitting golf balls. And, you know, I've realized again, like my body is, I'm not a big person. Like I'm pretty small compared to a lot of other players. So I've realized I could get fatigued rather quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, compared to most. And so I think towards the end of my round, after warming up for an hour and a half, like at the end, I'd get pretty tired um, yeah. mentally and physically. So, I mean, 30 minutes is a big change. And I thought, I think it has helped me. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But, but certainly you've, uh, you've got made more money on the tour this year. So yeah. <laughs> if you went by the uh, use, yeah. use dollars earned as a, as a metric, it's tr- definitely trending in the right direction. So, yeah. Yeah. I so, agree. Now, so now if you had to give, cause I always like to ask this particularly, you know, of our younger pros, like, cause there's definitely parents of juniors and juniors that listen, like what would be some insights that you would give to them? I mean, you obviously had the most successful and prolific, you know, high school girls golf career, in the history of North Carolina, like, like what, what would you attribute like the success of that to? You know, if you had to give yeah, some, I would, some thoughts. I would say, um, I would, a lot of my success has come from what I've learned in college, especially. Um, I've learned how I practice and um, the amount of time I spent has changed. And uh, when I was a junior golf, I was the one that, just like to hit golf balls for a long time. And mm-hmm. then I was, I loved practicing. Like I would spend hours um, on the course. It's like, and it would, a lot of the times it would just be, there wasn't any purpose to my practice. I always just thought like the longer I spent, the better I'd get. Um, mm-hmm. And with golf, I don't know if people have noticed, no matter how hard you work at it, sometimes the results just don't come. It's just yeah. one of those sports. It's a love hate thing, but um <laughs> So when I got to college, I've learned um, a lot of the times we always had a purpose with our practice um, and it didn't matter if it was an hour versus four hours. Like you would put in all your energy into having a purpose and coming out with a goal with what you wanted to do. Um, and a lot of during my time in college, I also played a ton, um, which before I didn't do as much. Um, and I thought that helped me tremendously. Mm-hmm. with my golf game in terms of like course management and like how you are mentally under pressure on the golf course. Like if you're playing a game with someone, you want to beat them. Like if you got a four footer, like you have to make those, you know, yeah. in practice, like by yourself, you could be like, Oh, I'll just pick that up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> you have to translate what you do um, in competition to like in your practice and have a purpose. Yeah. And so, so that's, would- mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, hundred percent. And like, I'm bef- before we jump into more of the on course. I'm really curious. Perp, you, you talked about purpose, practicing with a purpose. Mm-hmm. What, like, yeah, give us some examples. Like, what like what purposes do you practice <laughs> in terms of you go to the yeah, course? So, like, like what what do you what do you what is what are some of the purposes that some people can like take to the course when they go to practice? You know, as well. Yeah. So a lot of so in terms of 
let's say for putting, I always start with technique. I know a lot of people just like put around and like that's good for feel, but let's say if you want to improve your technique with putting, like what I do is set up um, a mirror and then a gate maybe like two or three feet feet in front of the ball on a straight putt. And I'll just do that. Like I'll roll 50 putts um, on just that mirror just to make sure my eyes are aligned um, because my whole thing is like, if you got on the course and you're just, and you don't have the right technique, you can't expect to get the results you want. So you have to work on a bit of things off course to get it to work on the course. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's like if, you, if you squat differently every single squat, you can't expect to do the same amount of weight every time. Like, like exactly. Taking, yeah. And then, yeah. And then you're shocked. You're shocked when your your deadlift form sucks, and you're shocked when your back hurts. Right. Like I exactly. think it's the same thing. I think I, and I think that's so common with amateurs that we like yeah we'll go out and just roll some putts like by feel, and then we're like we get on the golf course, and we're like wow this feels different, and we have no idea why, and we're like oh, I just suck. Well, well maybe your yeah. eyes are aligned differently, or your setup's different, or a hundred, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like I would say, and then granted I have more time than the average person would <laughs> with my practice, but like, even if it's just 10 minutes, that's all it takes, like create some form or like technique for yourself. And you benefit from that way more than spending an hour, just like hitting putts to random holes without really just like having a purpose. Exactly. And what about mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, just kind of to, to wrap, what would be two other, so if we think purpose, you know, we talked about putting in terms of having purpose of technique potentially, um, yeah. what would be two other, maybe, you know, you know, full, whether it's short game around the greens or, or maybe it's full yeah. swing, but what are some other purposes that you tend to practice and, and focus on? Yeah. So with chipping, um, that's also like a technique thing. So something that's helped me, I actually learned this from a friend is like you take nine golf balls and divide into like three. So like with three golf balls, you're going to work on a technique strictly on your like backswing. Right. Mm -hmm. So nothing else. It doesn't matter what the ball does. It doesn't matter how the contact is like feel for like how you want the backswing to be. And then mm -hmm. once you've done three of those, take the next three and then maybe you want to work on tempo. So now that you've done your backswing, the next three is just strictly tempo. Like you're not thinking about anything else but that. Um, so once you've gone through that, then the last three is just incorporating everything. Mm -hmm. um, just because there's so much with golf, like all these different factors, you know, you could have the same shot and the reason for that could be so many different things. Yeah. So when you can simplify it and narrow your focus to just one thing at a time, I think it helps a lot. Um, and that's something that I do even now. It could be with just my chipping too that I do that with. Yeah. Um, think, so that's something that I really enjoyed. Yeah. And I think me. as I'm hearing you talk about this, Jenny, it's, it's, there's such a parallel what you do on the golf course and what people should be doing in the gym and their workouts, mm -hmm. right? Like, like you should have a purpose. <laughs> you should just like, exactly. if your mobility sucks, you should be working on your mobility. Like if your, yeah. if your strength is low, we should be working on your strength. If your explosiveness is mm -hmm. not great, we should be working on that. And, and there should be a purpose with every one of your workouts. And I think, you know, throughout the year, if you're on the road, there's a purpose to recovery and, and maintaining general health. And if you're mm -hmm. home in the off season, the purpose may be more building so that we're, we have a bigger engine for the next season. Um, but I think there's yeah. so many parallels and to your point, like if you only got 10 minutes, like literally, if you can just do 10 minutes a day on your body, physically, most amateurs listening, like you can get full mobility in literally like yeah. a month or less. <laughs> like, like it doesn't take yeah. a lot of time if you have a focus and if you have a purpose. Um, exactly. yeah, so any other kind of parting thoughts in terms of, you know, I think it's kind of been a cool, you know, we didn't plan it this way, but it's been, it's been a cool conversation mm -hmm. around, around warm up and how to prepare for the round. And then obviously, you know, practicing is also preparing. But in terms of having purpose, mm -hmm. you know, any other thoughts you know, that you'd want to share with people that you think might, may help the, the next generation of golfers or even the current generation who we're just trying to get better? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing also is like you have to enjoy everything that you're doing as well. Like usually for me, like some days there's, I'll be honest, like there's some days where I just like can't be bothered to practice, right? Yeah. But like at the end of the day, if I can dedicate, this goes back to, I guess, purpose, but like if I can just dedicate 
even if it's 30 minutes of my time, like over the course of the year or like however long, like you can, you'll start to see results, even if you put half an hour, like, and I think if people can do that in the gym as well, like they'll see a huge difference. Um, not only like physically with their body, but like on the course, it'll translate for sure. 100%. Well, yeah. Jenny, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And, uh, you know, you've definitely shared, I've learned a couple things and I hope uh, everybody listening has learned a few things in terms of how they can prepare their body, but also the, you know, their golf game to play better golf and, um, always enjoy hanging out with you and chatting. So thanks so much for coming on and, uh, thank you guys for listening and, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you, uh, and, and kind of talking about getting your bodies better and, you know, obviously diffusing any of those time bombs of whether it's injury or, Hopefully we diffuse some uh, some bad waste, wasted time practicing that people have to <laughs> even warming up yeah. um, today as well. So, so thanks everybody for hanging out with us and we'll catch you on the next one.